Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a particular source of serial correlation, which comes about as a result of something which we call clustering. So what do we mean by this particular um, source of serial correlation clustering? Well, it's probably best explained through an example. Let's say we were interested in finding out how the test score of an individual I coming from classroom G depended on the classroom size. So note that classroom size here is um, not specific to individuals, it's specific to the group G. And if we were sort of thinking about what beta might be in this circumstance, we're sort of hoping that beta is less than naught. So as um, the classroom size increases, we sort of expect that um, the sort of scores of individuals might fall. And that might be as a result of the fact that teachers can't give such sort of tailored teaching and perhaps teachers have to spend more time sort of policing classroom behaviour. So there are all these reasons why we might expect that beta would be less than zero. Anyway, an individual's test score doesn't, isn't sort of purely determined by their classroom. Um, there are also sort of a whole host of other idiosyncratic factors um, which don't depend on classroom size. Um, but we can think about this error here as being composed of two separate components. Well, there are these sort of classroom or school specific components, um, which we call sort of VG, which could be, for example, a given class, as well as having a smaller classroom size, might have a better teacher, or perhaps they have better books, or perhaps the school has better funding. Um, so that's one source of, uh, sort of variation uh, amongst individuals in different classes. But there's also sort of a source of variation amongst individuals within the same class. We know that all individuals in a given class don't score exactly the same on a given test. So the, the, there are these sort of idiosyncratic components as well to this sort of error which our model is going to predict. So why does this lead to serial correlation? Well, let's let's think about what serial correlation actually means. Well, serial correlation in this context means that if I was to sort of write the covariance of error between individual I in classroom G with the error of an individual J in classroom G, well, we know that both of these um, errors, since both of these individuals are coming from the same class G, um, there is going to be this sort of classroom specific um, source of error. So perhaps both of these uh, individuals have the same teacher and perhaps that teacher is particularly good. So because of this sort of group source of error, there is a non-zero value of the covariance of eta ig with eta um, jg. So in, in actuality, it would be equal to sigma v squared, where this is the variance of our sort of group specific factor. And this is a really important source of standard error, which comes about due to this sort of group nature or sort of cluster nature of our data. If we do not take account of this clustering nature of our errors, then, uh, and if we rely solely on least squared estimates, then it can lead us to very misleading conclusions. So this is an important source of serial correlation, and it's an important way in which least squared estimates are no longer blue. In fact, there are estimators which are significantly better than least squared in these circumstances.